strength is unshakable. His hope is undeterred. And over the last few years, Joe has helped heal our country, helping, helping us all recover from the chaos of the last administration. We don't choose our chapter in history, but we can choose who leads us through it. And at this moment, with these, these perils the world is facing, there is no one that I would rather have sitting in the Oval Office right now than my husband. was Joe Biden, a president with integrity and character, who told the truth, and Donald Trump told lie after lie after lie. Oh, you're good. You're so good. <laughs> this election is about you. Joe is fighting for the families here in North Carolina and across America who are working hard to find a secure place in the middle class. The moms who worry that their daughters will grow up in a country with fewer rights than we had. And as a teacher, I'm always proud of teachers. <laughs> Love the teachers who are here. Of the way that Joe fights for educators, like our next speaker, Eric Fitz. <laughs> Eric is a former school principal, public school principal, <laughs> and he now works at Wake County Public Schools. <laughs> Teachers get the support they need so that students can thrive. Eric, thank you for all that you do for your fellow educators and students, your family, and your community. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage Eric Fitz. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. This is amazing. Uh, never could have imagined standing right here before you. Well, my name is Eric Fitz, and I'm a proud father, proud educator, but then here at Raleigh, North Carolina. Last night, I watched with pride as President Biden won the debate and put forward. He put forward a clear vision for making life better for our families. And Donald Trump made it very clear he's focused on retribution and revenge. But what amazed me most was that President Biden that we saw last night on the debate stage was the same Joe I had the pleasure of sharing a meal with a few months ago right in my home with my sons, Christian and Carter. When we sat at my dinner table, I was able to share with him how grateful I was for his leadership and for his compassion. Because of President Biden, my student loan debt had been forgiven just a few months earlier. <laughs> By forgiving the loans, that enabled me to become the educator that I am today. President Biden changed my life for the better and for the lives of my sons. With the debt erased, which I would have been paying off for decades, I'm able to save for my son's college pursuits. I'm able to invest in their futures and support their dreams. What struck me most about our conversation with President Biden was the way that he listened. He made all of us feel seen, heard, and valued. Afterwards, my sons told me they would never forget hearing the president say to them how proud he was of them. Yeah. 
My children are one of the most important things to me in this world, and that's something President Biden and I share. I know who Joe is. He's a dad. He's a leader. He's a good man. He wakes up every day fighting, for, fighting to make sure that my sons and all of our children have the future that they deserve. I'm proud Joe Biden is our president. So whether he is fighting for our rights on the debate stage, protecting democracy on the world stage, or eating burgers with me in my house in Raleigh, <laughs> Joe Biden is a good and decent man who fights for our families every day. <laughs> President Biden shows up for everyday North Carolinians, and North Carolina is ready to show up for him in November. We need to send him right back to the White House. So now, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor to the state of North Carolina, the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Say, please excuse my back. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it's, good to, it's good knowing you have my back. <laughs> Eric, thanks for that introduction. We had a wonderful time spending time with your sons, Kristen and Carter. We're going to grow up to be incredible young men. You would have been really impressed the way they talked about their dad. How informed they were about what was going on. I was truly impressed. And I ate two hamburgers. <laughs> a special thanks to Roy and Kristen Cooper. Roy, you've been a great governor. <laughs> Which makes it all the more important that North Carolina elected great governor to replace you, Josh Stein. <laughs> reelected again with your help, I want you to know that I'm not promising not to take Roy away from North Carolina. <laughs> Where we're coming out, I don't know. And thanks to all the state and local leaders here today, the great musicians and entertainers who performed earlier. Folks, let me tell you why I'm here in North Carolina. I'm here for what? for one reason, because I intend to win this state in November. Oh, you see that. <laughs> I think we are. And Roy's right, we win here, we win the election. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to stand up for the women of America. We're going to restore Roe v. Wade's the law of the land. We're going to stand up for the right to vote. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to stand up for Medicare and Social Security. Yeah. We're going to fight for child care, paid leave, and health care. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to keep lowering the cost of prescription drugs, not just for seniors, but for every single American. Yeah. We're going to keep protecting the Affordable Care Act. Which is why more than 40 million Americans have health insurance today. Yeah. Been before. We're going to protect our children 
and get the weapons of war off our streets. <laughs> we'll provide clean drinking water, affordable high-speed internet, quality education for every child in America. We're going to secure our border and protect legal immigration. And unlike the other guy, we're going to stand up to dictators like Putin. Because America bows to no one, no one, no one ever. <laughs> Folks, and we're going to keep dealing with the climate crisis. Preserve, protect, and defend our democracy. It is more than anything else. That is what is at stake in America this election. Your freedom, your democracy. America itself is at stake. Now, folks, I don't know what you did last night, but I spent 90, stage, 90 minutes on the stage debating the guy who has the morals of an alley cat. <laughs> Did you see Trump last night? Yeah. My guess, he said, I mean it sincerely, a new record for the most lies told in a single debate. He lied about the great economy he created. He lied about the pandemic he botched, killing millions of people. He closed businesses, he closed schools. Losing their homes, people all over this country. America was flat on its back. So I told Trump that he was just one of two presidents of American history who left office with fewer jobs than he started. Herbert Hoover was the other one. That's why I call him Donald Herbert Hoover Trump. And then he lied about how great he was for veterans. Then I told him how he had called a veteran and had given their lives in the country in World War I and refused to go to the grave sites. He called them suckers and losers. Yeah. He tried to deny it. But let me ask you, are you going to believe a four-star Marine general, his own former chief of staff, John Kelly, who said he said that, or a disgrace defeating a lying Donald Trump? My son was one of those people, not a war woman in the beat. Folks, Look, how about the fact that 44, 44 top advisors, including the vice president, aren't supporting him this time around. The people who know him best, 40 of them, said, I will not support the man I work for this time around. It tells you a lot about the person who knows him. Look, he lied about how great he was on crime. I had to remind him that he oversaw a record increase in murder rates in 2020. On my watch, violent crime has hit a 50-year low. There's more to do than 50-year low. And then I pointed out that the only convicted criminal on the stage last night was Donald Trump. <laughs> when I thought about his 34 felony convictions, his sexual assault on a woman in a public place, his being fined $400 million for business fraud, I thought to myself, Donald Trump isn't just a convicted felon. Donald Trump is a one-man crime wave. He's got more trials. He's got more trials coming up. Lock him 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 up. Look, the thing that bothers me maybe most about him, he has no respect for women or the law. He doesn't. And then his biggest lie, 
He lied about how he had nothing to do with the insurrection of January 6th. We all saw with our own eyes. We watched it on television. We saw thousands of this direction attack the Capitol. We saw police being attacked, the Capitol being ransacked, the mob hunting for Speaker Pelosi, gallows literally set up for Mike Pence. And then he told them as he sat in the dining room, one, one, the private dining room, one door off my Oval Office, he sat there for three hours watching the TV. He did not a single thing to stop it, nothing, nothing at all. And now, and now he wants to pardon all those convicted and but folks, for all his lies, we did learn some, we learned some important truths about Donald Trump last night. We learned he's still proud of being the person who killed Roe v. Wade. We learned, <coughs> no, <coughs> we learned he's still proud about the pain and cruelty he's inflicted on America's women. We learned he still believes that politicians, not doctors and women, should make decisions about the woman's health. We learn that if he's elected again and the MAGA Republicans pass a national ban on abortion, he will sign it. Yeah. Donald Trump says he thinks Roe v. Over, over, overturning Roe v. Wade was a beautiful thing. I think it was a nightmare. No, I really mean it, a nightmare. And I made it clear again last night that if you elect me and Kamala, you give us a Democratic Congress, we will make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. <laughs> he continued to lie. He said, I quadruple taxes. <laughs> Where the hell has he been? <laughs> Which is a simple lie. I didn't raise a tax on anyone in America who had made less than $400,000 a year. And I won't in my second term either. We learned that Trump, who had the largest deficit of any president in four years because of a $2 trillion tax cut to the super wealthy, we learned that Trump wants to give another giant tax cut for the very wealthy and the biggest corporations. This time, $5 trillion. Not a joke. $5 trillion. To pay for it, he's going to cut Medicare and Social Security. He'll cut health care. He'll do it all. The millions of working middle class Americans all pay for another tax cut for the very wealthy. Then, to add insult to injury, he wants to raise taxes on the average family $2,500 a year. What amounts to a new 10% tail tax on all products imported in America. That's his new plan for food, coffee, candy bars, and so much more. It's going to raise the tax on the average family $2,500 a year. The most dangerous thing, though, we learned that Donald Trump will not respect this year's election outcome. He's still not respecting the last time out. Well, think about it. Every court in Iran ruled that it was a fair election. He's still denying it, still telling lies. Three times Trump was asked last night by the moderators, would he respect the election results if he lost this time? Three times he refused to answer. Three times. Folks, Donald Trump refused to accept the results of 2020. We all saw what happened on January the 6th. It's a direct consequence of that. It was an international embarrassment. By the way, as I go to these international meetings, I know every major world leader. And I, and I literally, because I've been around, as you might have noticed. <laughs> but they asked me. Did he really mean this? Is that, or was this real? It caused the constitutional crisis and international embarrassment. Now, Trump is making it clear that if he doesn't win this time, there will be, in his words, bloodshed. bloodshed. No president has ever said anything like that. No president. His words, not mine. We're going to let Donald Trump attack our democracy again? I don't think so. Folks, we've come a long way. We've come a long way from the mess of Donald Trump.
bless us. It came out of the pandemic. We're a long way from what Donald Trump telling us to inject bleach in our skin. That COVID is not that dangerous. <laughs> Today, we have the strongest economy in the world, without exception. 15 million new jobs. 800,000 manufacturing jobs. Unemployment under 4% for a record two years in a row. Historic Black and Hispanic unemployment down. Historic creation of small businesses in Black and all communities across the nation, particularly in rural areas. Historic economic growth. Inflation has dropped from 9% to 3 and is still going down. I know we have more to do to get prices down. We have to take on corporate greed. They're making twice the profit they were before the pandemic. We got to make housing more affordable. Provide childcare. Make the tax code fair. 16 Nobel winners of the economic Nobel Prize have looked at my economy, economic plan this week. They've said, and issued a report and a Trump's plan. Here's what they concluded. They said that my plan would continue to grow the economy and bring down inflation. 16 Nobel laureates. And that Trump's plan would send the nation into recession and inflation soaring through the roof. But don't take my word for it. Folks, let me close with this. I know I'm not a young man. Let's take the obvious. Well, I know. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deb debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. I know. I know. I know right from wrong. <laughs> and I know how to do this job. I know how to get things done. I know, like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. I know what it took to take our economy from the depths of the pandemic to where it is today, the strongest economy in the world. I know what it will take to bring this economy to everybody. I know what it will take to rally the world to stand up against Putin and defend freedom, not yield him. And I know it will take to keep the world safe and free for the years ahead. Folks, I give you my words of Biden. I would not be running again if I didn't believe with all my heart and soul I can do this job. Because quite frankly, the stakes are too high. The stakes are too high. Donald Trump, Donald Trump is a genuine threat to this nation. He's a threat to our freedom. He's a threat to our democracy. He's literally a threat to everything America stands for. Look, he doesn't understand what I think all of you do. America is the finest, the most unique nation in the world. We're the only nation in the world, and I mean this sincerely, it's a fact statement, not a hyper hyperbolic statement, it's fact. We're the only nation in the world built on an idea. All the nations built on ethnicity, geography, and other religion, but we're built on an idea that we're all created equal. Yeah. We deserve to be treated equally throughout our lives. Yeah. We've never fully lived up, and I'll be damned in the year 2024, just two years just two years before the 250th anniversary of our Declaration of Independence, that I'll let Donald Trump walk away from it. I give you my word.
I give my word as a Biden, we're still a nation. I believe we're still a nation that believes in honesty, in decency, in treating people with respect. I still believe we're a nation that gives everyone a fair shot and leaves nobody behind. We're still a nation that gives hate no safe harbor. And we're still the beacon to the world. We can never give up what makes America, America. Donald Trump is motivated by revenge and retribution. Well, revenge and retribution never build a damn thing. Yeah. You and I, we Americans are a nation of hope, yeah. optimism, and possibilities. Yeah. That's what always built America. And that's going to continue to build America today. The choice in this election is simple. Donald Trump will destroy our democracy. I will defend it. So folks, are you with me? Yeah. Donald Trump's the first president I've heard of that stood up there running for president, having been one for one term, saying, America's a failing nation. Where the hell does he think he is? Yeah. I'm serious. Failing, I don't know a president wouldn't trade places with America in a heartbeat. Yeah. He's dead wrong. Yeah. America's not a losing nation. America's winning. As I stand here today, I can honestly say I'm never more optimistic about America's future in my whole career. You just have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there, there is nothing, nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing when we act together. We've got it. So may God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Let's go get them, North Carolina.